Hey everybody, Will Tompkins here at Tom Cruise Studios, Live Music in Austin, bringing you episode number 10 for uh, Three Beers and a Whiskey featuring Colorblind. Here's beer number two. Uh, the Dirty Dog. Dirty Dog. Oh, yeah. Yep. Man, that is, uh, that is one of my all-time, long-time favorite places that, you know, uh, really cool go, thing, go hang out there. Um, ben Davis and Anthony Stevenson, who now own Come and Take It Live, they were the heart and, you yeah, know, beating soul and booking the yeah. shit out of the Dirty yeah. Dog. Yes. Um, so I was always there, and, and then they parted ways and did their own project, which you, I think you which guys are familiar, right? You've got, oh, my God, that place is so gorgeous. Dude, it's and awesome. Yeah. yeah, upstairs, downstairs, all the. I mean, I think everybody here has been to come I'm and take it was. for some kind. I know Max went with us to emo night, right? Was it? Yeah. So Heck yeah. So we, you know, we've enjoyed that place. You know, I, I go there. More than I should. Yeah, but I they, they that. like it. I'll go and I'll write about. I'll take photos and write about yeah. it. So but, speaking um, of, I'm oh, gonna interrupt you. All right. Um, because you're playing on the 25th, are you guys going to sell merch while y'all are performing, or can yes. you buy it online? Or? Yes, so you can buy it online. Um, you can buy our merch online. I think it's uh, it's like bigcartel.com slash colorblind TX. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong. Uh, oh, yes. But the internet director is going to find it and shout it out to us. Yes, minute, so, so thank you. Yeah, we are not that prepared. <laughs> uh, I know. Uh, but yes, we will have merch at our show. Yeah, uh, including so, so uh, hats, shirts, discs. Yeah. Hats, shirts. We we ironed on all the patches ourselves. Yeah. So there's yes. like extra love yeah. in there. Your sweat dripping yeah. on yeah. there. Yeah. yeah, like it's a stain. No, that's my love. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, <laughs> yeah. it's yeah. Uh, we will have some t-shirts. I don't think we have. I'm not. I don't think we have any more physical CDs left of our LDP. But you need, well, then yeah. you need yeah. you need to print out freaking digital download yes. cards be like oh, oh here you go two bucks and you got our download yeah. or you know huh yeah and we'll have we'll have some patches yeah, and some stickers and t-shirts and hats cool. and stuff like yeah. that yeah so. good man so okay. cool. Cool. very cool yeah, i did over here while i was in the kitchen doing something i don't know um so you've been in austin about eight years you said no we've actually oh, wait, wait. we've been in we've been in austin for about 20 years so we've our, well, our Okay, apparently I wasn't listening <laughs> right. So we've been in Austin for a while, yes. but uh, you're from Houston. We yeah. Are, okay. Travis I mean, I was Austin. just born there pretty much, and then immediately yeah. just like came yeah, to Austin. You, got, you, got, you, got, you got the hell out as quick as you yeah. could. Yeah. It's like, yeah. <laughs> you had the pacifier in, and you're strong. Mom, you were fuck just, Houston. Get me out of here. So yeah, we were, we were both born in Houston, moved to Austin in 97, I believe, and been here ever since, man. We love it. Yeah. I mean, happy that you guys are doing the music thing in Austin. Uh, it, it's great hearing great music come out of Austin. Thanks, it's man. also, at the same time, really a heartbreaking thing to, you know, Kendall goes, oh, these are my friends. You got to listen to this. And he plays it. I'm like, this is badass. I love <laughs> this. And then it's like, you know, there's all of these other good bands in Austin. And it was like, why are these guys not on the radio? Why are these guys not platinum? And it's because you, the music is really good. Thanks. And man. you've got a great voice. Thank you. Are y'all really wanting to and trying to make that push to we're going to, you know, put out this EP and then we're going to start promoting it? And, oh, yeah. You know, yes. I mean, there's no selling it to the radio. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, mean, nowadays, I mean, nobody. I mean,. Look, if I if we were put on the radio, that would be really great, and mm -hmm. we're definitely gonna try to. Release. We've got the sound that that yeah. would mesh with it and do well. Yeah, so. and we're gonna definitely aim for that. But um, but I mean, man, like a lot of people that they, they get on Spotify nowadays, yeah. and, and the times are changing in a way, and and so I think really it's there's kind of beauty in it because it's, it's all about promoting yourself now. Yeah, you, you don't go. really have to rely on some dude at a radio station. You right, know? you do so. the self-promotion, then you get the, the YouTube, you get the video out there, you promote that, and yeah. the, the video hits on that, and you get the yeah. downloads and the streaming. Yeah. You know, hey, we streamed a million, yay, here's yeah. our check for 10 bucks. Yeah. 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 So, hey, hey, but you know what? Anything, we're, we're thankful for. Yeah, like, for sure. I mean, like, in, the, the music industry is way different than it used to be. Like, the, the reason we started playing music is because our dad is a drummer and was in a rock band in Houston and stuff like that. So it's kind of just always been in front of us. So shout out to your dad. All right. Yeah. To, what band was he in? It's just he a local, in, yeah, local was, band? Yeah. yeah. But see, you can't downplay it like, oh, well, he was just a drummer in a local band in Houston. Right. Because right, right now, 
you're just a drummer in a local band. Exactly. Also. So exactly. you've got the dreams and aspirations of taking it. Yeah. But I mean, you know, you got to give props to your dad. That's what you did. You got the, that's where you got the music, the love exactly. for the oh, yeah. performance from him. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, when when he when he was you know trying to get it with his band and stuff like that, it was you know people had to buy a whole album just for one or two songs that they liked. You know, so bands were made. It was, that's the thing is that you could make a lot of money as a band, but you know, social media and internet and stuff like that has totally changed the game as far as being able to promote yourself and reach people all over the world. But at the same time, they can just buy one of your songs or hear it for free, you know, so, which is great. Music mm-hmm. should be, you know, yeah, it's just, uh, well, well you it, get everybody. To right. Care of. Um, and, and you mentioned, so I, I kind of think I know where the answer is going to come from when I ask this. I have a friend of mine. He um, put in words to me what I, I saw and, and knew, but it, it just like nobody had actually said it. And it was like the, the industry, there's no more selling of like, I'm going to put out a whole disc, 12 songs, and this is my goal, and I'm going to spend all this money and time and produce a whole disc when all of the money, and you said it a minute ago, all the money is putting in, all the money to make is in creating a single, putting the single out, pushing it, getting the response from that, and then you can stay relevant every three months. Yeah, exactly. Every yes, six exactly. months, you're dropping, exactly. something new, dropping something new, dropping something new, dropping something new, and it's not like, hey, here's the new song from Colorblind on their album that was released eight months ago. Yeah, right? exactly. It's, and this is the third hit song from that album, and it's like, yeah. so then you said it, like, buy vinyl, and they're for one or two songs on there. Now the industry and the world has turned where it's yeah. like, let's put out, let's, what song do we like? Let's, let's, Let's crush it. Let's put the single out. Let's get it streaming. Let's make a video on it. Boom! Hit the next one. Yeah. Yep. You see that? You see it today, where when somebody puts out a single or somebody does something, my biggest thing is it's always somebody who you kind of look at them and you're like, you really want to make that guy famous, or you really want to make that <laughs> single famous? You yeah. really want to give that guy all that money? And then there's artists in Austin, there's artists in Houston, all over the world where there's small time bands and they can put out a single, but it's all about producing the album. It's all about Mm -hmm. producing the single, Mm -hmm. and then when the single is released, everybody can relate to the beat of it, or if it's an instrumental, or if it's something that's catchy, it doesn't really matter. Like I feel like doing that and doing the single thing has taken away from the artist being able to write a whole story, yeah, make an something. epic story yeah. with a CD. Here's ten yes. songs, now and here's a story song. we're weaving. <laughs> yeah, that's very one true. song. You got to put, com- you gotta you gotta put the whole story in three and a half minutes. Yep. Instead yep. of one song that you're promoting the hell out of, instead of being able to tell like really, twelve tracks that you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it's also, you know, I guess it kind of comes down also to instead of say releasing. You know, when you're going to, especially as a local band, most studios, it's, it's generally pretty expensive. If you want yeah. to, I mean, which is why I was asking earlier should, how y'all are doing it. Oh, yeah, I right. mean, like, you should go somewhere where you have to pay some money to make sure that it's a, your product is professionally done and polished if possible, just mm-hmm. because that's what people are going to continue to hear. You know, that's going to outlast you. Your music yeah. will still be there when you're gone. If, so if it's on the like, internet, it will live. Right. So forever. you want to make sure that you are investing in your, in your product and that yeah. you're spending money on good recordings and stuff like that. So that being said, if you are shelling out money to record a 12 song full length record, you know, you could just break that up into two six song EPs and spread it out thinner over more That's, time. You know what I mean? So it's just kind of... I know what you mean and I, it's, it's mm-hmm. like, the, I don't understand like from a fan of the music scene, which is why I do this, is why you know right. these people are in here is because they love the awesome music scene, um, and and I, I like the idea of like taking it and breaking it up, and it's like, but I want to put out a full twelve, and but six or four songs, or hell, I've got some EPs running that are two songs, they put yeah. two on yeah, a disc yeah, and yeah. put it. I was like, how much did you spend for the disc? <laughs> Yeah, and the plastic label and the paper, exactly. and it's got two songs on it, but they're two badass songs, and it's easy to throw that in there and then play. And I'm like, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. making you know your your 
your brain, your brainchild, your effort, your love, and putting it in there, and then going like, okay, we're gonna split it up. We're gonna do part here, part here, part here, yeah. every few months. And I guess with a lot yeah. of it is, it's just musicians kind of responding to everybody else and all the fans. Where a lot of the time, whenever you pop a CD in, you just turn to track two, or three, or whatever. You would like making an album and, and making like a twelve track thing is so awesome and it's so cool. That you can be an artist and create like a whole picture, but there's it how is. many people are really gonna sit through and listen to every song on it, and, and so they're just kind of responding it has to, to be good. yeah, it has to be good. every song. And there are those bands out there where it's like you're listening to their album, like damn. Now every musicians song do that. Is good. Musicians who are yes. in bands that they understand the work and stuff that goes into it. I mean, being in a band, it's, it's just like the same thing goes, like if you work at a restaurant, it changes the way you eat at one, you know, so it's, yep. once nice you, once analogy, dude, you know, like, <laughs> that ass, right? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, like, <laughs> never eat there because I know the backstory. Yeah, right, right. So, I mean, just with being in a band, it's once you put a lot of effort and, you know, plateaus and long ass nights into a record, you understand how much goes into it for other groups so you start listening to records from start to finish as one big piece because, because you understand the art aspect of the it. art aspect of it and and you know if somebody put this many songs on here you know not only are you listening to the music and the lyrics but you're like what's the common thread why did they put it together in this order there's always a reason, there's a reason. yeah uh, I have a friend in fact you know he, he show with us uh, I don't know, it was probably a couple of months in fact it was before Halloween um, George Von Doom is a local rapper mm -hmm. and he has a CD release party that he's doing tonight he was supposed to release this full length disc in De in October October 31st it was supposed to be a Halloween release and you know like you guys were talking about you, stuff happens you gotta move things around and adjust it and so his CD release is tonight mm. Oh, cool. um, and yeah, and he's doing the show, and I was all like, "Oh man!" And he, he's like, "Hey man, you gonna make it a show? Uh, I really would love for you to be there." No, and I'm like, that, man. "I'm, I'm all, sorry. Fuck. Are you kidding? <laughs> and this is, you know, the dilemma I was in tonight with having you guys on, and we've made this commitment, and I'm like, "No, no, no!" I, I flew in from Houston yeah. to hang out with you guys tonight, drink some beer, and then Thank I'm bouncing you. back to Houston that. tomorrow. No, no, I appreciate you guys coming in here. This of course. Is, I would have drove. Uh, hey, if I didn't fly, I would have drove. So either way, we're making the show happen tonight. But then, you know, I've got this guy, Von Doom, who's putting out his CD release. He's got a big show, and it's it's one of those epic 12, 13, 16 song discs. Um, and he's got a whole story he tells in it. And, and That's so awesome. I've seen the effort he's put into making that. And yeah, I can see what you're talking about. It's it takes like a lot of time. The time, time. and then it, you listen to a track on like, oh, this is good. I like this one. And, and fans, you know, go in there and then start picking out what they like and want to right. listen to. So how do you, if with everything that's going on now in the course of talking about how long it takes, how do you guys come about like artists nowadays are putting out albums like full length albums once a year i mean they're touring or they're it's once every two years or where most of the time from you know a couple years ago people were waiting two or three years and they would go on a tour for a year and a half and then now there's so much pressure from the internet social media everybody who listens and downloads and all that stuff to Okay, well, it's been it's been three months. Where's your next single? It's been yeah. six months. Where's your next That's single? Really what are you question. doing? Well, I mean, a lot of big artists that are in like big nice tour bus, like a lot of the time, like well, you don't even really have to be in a, in a big tour bus for this, but like uh, you know, you you can have like Logic and like uh, digital audio workstations on your laptop, and you can make you can write music and make kind of crappy little demos. I mean, if you have a a digital audio workstation you can make really really good quality stuff yeah but if you need to put little demos down and little ideas down like you can constantly be writing stuff so is it is it like that for you guys where um, you, you have a lyric that jumps in your who who writes the lyrics in the band? so so you both yeah. and you write the lyrics yeah. okay yeah so is it is it 
kind of like what you hear or see on the internet or on TV where it's like you're in a restaurant and somebody's over you ear, overhear somebody saying something or somebody drops it. I mean, how where yeah. where does it come from? Where well, does it come from in your head? A lot of the paper. Yeah, a lot of the time it'll just kind of appear there. I'll be thinking of things. Uh, I I love I like reading. Uh, but I just keep like on the notes section of my phone. I'll just have like a random shit section where I'll just jot down ideas and uh, melodies. You know, little melodies will come by in my head and, and uh, <laughs> you, just kind of start. How do you write down a melody? You're all like, da, voice da, da. Oh, voice, 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 voice recording. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I have over, I have like over two hundred <laughs> voice memos in my phone of me like. <laughs> you know, like oh, it works though. Because this is how you. No, and then I saw a meme on Facebook or something like that. When when, you, when the guitar player keeps trying to tell you how to play it, and all you do is stare at him, and go, uh huh. Yeah, yeah. And you don't get what he's saying. You know, it's me, 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 dee dee da. Yeah. Ear. No, yeah. When we were a, we were a language. The first dude. studio <laughs> session that I went to, and Tyler was recording drums. Uh, Eric, the producer that we were working with, Tyler would do something, and he would be like, No, 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 don't do that. Do like a da 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 da. And he and he would do it and he'd be like, okay, you, you speak, speak drum. drum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like, you're good, you speak drum. Yeah. Alright everybody. Thank you very much for tuning in to that episode of Three Beers and a Whiskey featuring Colorblind. Make sure you uh, hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon for notifications so you don't miss future videos from Three Beers and a Whiskey.